Welcome, I'm Skip Husking, your Glen Rock Councilman, and I am here at the second of four forums run by Ridgewood Water to address many of the issues that you may have. We are going to have a fourth forum in Glen Rock on October 15th between 6 and 8 p.m. The interesting thing about these forums are they are not professional presentations. As you can see, there are different tables and there are 10 to 20 Ridgewood Water professionals who are here and answer any questions that you may have or concerns you have about the supply of water to your home. Before we continue, I just want to clear up one big mis misperception that people have. If you've read about in the paper and, uh, well, mainly in the paper, the, the lawsuit that is going on, it is not against Ridgewood Water. It is a lawsuit involved with the four municipalities, Ridgewood, Midland Park, Wyckoff, and Glenrock. So if you have questions about that, go to your mayor and council meeting and ask where we stand with those issues, with that issue. Hi, I'm here with Rich Calby, who is the director of Ridgewood Water. So I'm gonna leave it up to the expert, let him give you an overview of the uh, forum. Rich. All right. All right, thank you, Skip, and thanks for coming tonight. And uh, to everybody out there in Glen Rock and the other service areas, Wyckoff, Ridgewood, and Midland Park, please come out and join us at these events. Uh, we're gonna give you a little overview of what the event is. You know, hopefully you come and attend and you can find out more about what Ridgewood Water is all about. So we're gonna take a little tour through the venue here. You know, the main purpose tonight is to, to open it up to the public so you have an opportunity to see every bit about what Ridgewood Water is. You could ask any question. If the answer can't be found tonight, you could leave it with us and we'll get back to you. But all the experts are here to answer anything you have on any subject for Ridgewood Water. And we start telling the story tonight, Ridgewood Water 101. We tell the story of how the utility evolved, how big the utility is, how many miles of pipe we have, how many hydrants, how we get the water to your home. Because a lot of people don't understand where the water comes from. They often ask, when it, why is it raining and we have water restrictions? We don't store the water from the rain. We take the water from the ground. And we have a limited capacity based on the number of wells that are in the ground. But as we get through that story, we slowly develop into regulation. What do we have to sample? You know, why do we sample for it? How often do we do it? And we take those regulations and they evolve into projects. What do we have to improve in the system to meet those regulations? Whether it's improving a tank, putting a new mixer in to maintain water quality, or putting a backup power so in the event of a failure, we're still operating and providing you safe drinking water. Then we take that forward to the EPA and their unregulated contaminant rule, which we've been measuring contaminants since 2001. Every period, the EPA puts out a series of contaminants that they nationwide want to look for the sources of these contaminants and compare whether or not they should be regulated. Out of the most recent uh, term of unregulated contaminant rule, they developed the contaminant called PFAS, more prevalent contaminant that's in our area and in a lot of stuff. It's in a lot of water sources and we're finding it here in rigid water. So we start to tell you the story of PFAS, how it's evolved in its chemistry, and then take you into how we're treating for that and protecting the customers of rigid water. Not to get in the, the real nitty gritty of the chemistry, but you have to understand that these chains are very tight and hard to break down. But there is a way to get them out of the water. No different than your filtering at home that might have activated carbon in it, such as a Brita or any type of tabletop um, filter or ones you have for your refrigerator. We have a much larger scale treatment system where we have large vessels that are about 22 feet high, large in diameter, and contain granulated activated carbon. The carbon in these units has a large surface area. It's the size of a football field or more. So what happens is the PFAS contaminant comes in the water stream into those vessels, comes in contact with the carbon and is absorbed. So the effluent water that comes out of there treated has no PFAS chemical in it. Over time, that carbon begins to get spent as it absorbs more and more of the compound and we change out the carbon to a fresh media so that we can continue to provide water with 0,3 PFAS. One of the things I mentioned when I introduced this was the service that Ridgewood Water provides with the meters that they have. They have three different types of meters and the majority of people have the type that they will come in 
and they will download the last three months of data by hour, day, and gallons per minute. This way you can see if A, you have a, a leak or when you're using the most amount of water. It's a really great service that people should take advantage of because one of the ways we can get more water or improve and maybe not have restrictions is people conserve when it's wasted water. Thank you and I hope to see you come out.